What's going on with the Boeing Starliner right now? Well, if you say the astronauts are stranded or stuck in any way, be prepared to face a lot of criticism on the internet. However, it's fair to say that their return has been delayed more than once. This topic has fired up comments online, everything from blaming Boeing further to saying SpaceX should come to the rescue and even calling it Strandliner instead of Starliner. But let's look at the timeline and for the purposes of this video, just state the facts. We know that multiple delays occurred before the Starliner spacecraft launched into orbit early June, and it's been almost two weeks since its scheduled return to Earth. The Starliner space capsule remains docked at the International Space Station, and this is a partially reusable spacecraft, which launched on June 5th with astronauts Sonny Williams and Butch Wilmore. This was supposed to be about a week-long stay at the International Space Station, so why haven't they returned home on time? Well, there were helium leaks and failing reaction control thrusters that are now something being looked at and tested. But let's be clear, this mission has faced a lot of criticism for being delayed, and it's critical for Boeing certification as a NASA-approved private space transportation provider. So why is this such a touchy subject? Well, Starliner has been having issues since as far back as December 20th, 2019. That's when Starliner failed its critical flight test, but thankfully this was an unmanned flight test, but it failed to achieve its intended orbit, which stranded the capsule too far from the ISS to dock and deliver cargo as intended. You know, y'all are dealing with a uh, lower orbit than expected. But it is still something that uh, is manageable. Am I understanding that correctly? Correct. So Starliner is designed to fly um, anywhere in low Earth orbit. So the fact that we are at a slightly lower than planned orbit um, does not mean the vehicle can't perform um, like a spacecraft that can automate that can fly automated and on its own. Uh, so the, the processes we've been going through um, work the exact same way as if we were at a slightly, high, slightly higher orbit. It just that we have a, um, you know, we go around the Earth a little bit faster because our, added, our altitude is a little bit lower. Why did this happen? Well, Starliner's onboard clock was set incorrectly and caused the capsule's engines to fire prematurely after launching from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. So Starliner was on the wrong orbital trajectory for reaching the ISS, which was unfortunate, but this is why we have tests, right? And check out this question from a pre-flight briefing where a reporter asks about the Boeing delays. I don't think anybody thought it would take five years to get to this point. Why, aside from the early funding shortfalls and some of the technical issues, it's taken so long to get to this point. So I think building new spacecraft and developing hardware is really hard, right? And so to, I think folks say um, it looks like it's taken a long time, but I think when you go back and look at development history over time, I think um, this program's overall, I think, been doing a good job of laying out and, and meeting its obligations. Not exactly, like Irene, as you pointed out, to our original goal of, you know, late 2017, but, but moving towards us being able to, to have crewed missions within the time frame that we'd like to have them. Another criticism from the public, Boeing was awarded a $4.2 billion NASA contract in 2014 for the development of Starliner. And so, of course, anytime there's this much money involved and results aren't being delivered, it will be met with questions and criticism. So let's fast forward to August 2nd, 2021. A second Starliner test flight was delayed indefinitely. This was due to propulsion system issues, and this would push the third attempt to May 25th of 2022. Starliner did have a successful unmanned mission and touchdown and did reach the ISS in 2022. It completed a six-day unmanned journey before returning to land in New Mexico, but this was not without issues. NASA scientists found out the capsule suffered failures in two of three orbital maneuvering control thrusters located on one of the cross rear-facing structures. Then we thought we would see the first crewed mission in May of this year, but it was canceled after a valve issue was discovered during pre-flight checks. And then on May 18th, the date the launch was rescheduled for, a helium leak was discovered by NASA engineers, leading to yet another postponement for Starliner's first manned mission 
And if you were watching along with me on June 1st of this year, the launch was aborted at the last minute. It was scrubbed due to faulty ground equipment. And as everyone was holding their breath on June 5th, the Starliner crewed mission finally launched but reported leaks. Yes, on the day of the launch, two more helium leaks were discovered by NASA and Boeing. This came in addition to the previously discovered minor leak from May. And the day following the launch, Starliner docked with the ISS, but this was after a 27-hour orbital flight, which also had its own issues. The docking was an hour behind schedule due to thruster glitches and more helium leaks. The Starliner was kept outside a 200-meter keepout sphere, encompassing the ISS as engineers tried to return the thrusters to operation. Butch and Sonny entered the ISS two hours after docking was completed, and on June 12th, the astronauts were supposed to return home to Earth. But NASA delayed the Starliner return as those small helium leaks and thruster issues were still being troubleshooted about a week later. Then the Starliner return was pushed yet again, stating that Starliner would not come home before June 26 due to more analysis needed. And just two days ago, the return was pushed back again to no sooner than June 28th. Yesterday, Wednesday, June 26th, NASA officials announced the vehicle has more than enough helium aboard to return to Earth, and there's no rush for the crew to leave the space station. Instead of the initial plan of around eight days in space for astronauts Barry Wilmore and Sunita Williams, NASA says the latest delay will put them closer to 20 days. The Starliner faces two main problems. First, there's a series of helium leaks in the propulsion system, one of which was known about before the flight. The second problem is with five thrusters that temporarily failed as the vehicle made its approach to the ISS. So saying that they're stranded or stuck in some ways is not true. However, their return has been delayed significantly, so I could see why people would say they're stuck. But of course, they're not without support and resources aboard the ISS. According to NASA's Steve Stitch, he said, quote, we're taking our time and following our standard mission management team process. We are letting the data drive our decision making relative to managing the small helium leaks and thruster performance we observed during rendezvous and docking. Boeing has its back against the wall on this one. The success or failure of Starliner will be a deciding factor in whether the capsule will be certified to provide future commercial space flights for NASA. And even SpaceX astronaut Jared Isaacman supports having more than one spacecraft operational. SpaceX has served as the only American transportation service to the ISS since 2020, which is pretty crazy. So at this time, it's safe to say that the astronauts are still at the ISS and not needing a rescue mission from a company like SpaceX, well, at least not yet. I've received a lot of criticism for even edging into the territory of saying that these astronauts are stranded or stuck, so I thought that it would be helpful to at least state the facts of the timeline for this video. Of course, with human life involved, there is no room for error on this return. The last update from NASA's commercial crew announced leaders are adjusting the June 26 return, which obviously didn't happen yesterday, due to a conflict with the series of spacewalks. They also stated this additional time gives the team further review of the propulsion system data and the ability to assess any additional testing opportunities. Mission managers are evaluating future return opportunities following the station's planned spacewalk on July 2nd. So don't fire me, but I want to know from you in the comments, what do you really think is going on? Do you think that these are excuses? And do you think that SpaceX will have to assist in a return home? Or do you have faith that the Starliner will be able to do the job and bring these astronauts back to Earth? Let me know in the comments, and I hope that this video helped at least give you a different perspective on the situation. Obviously, there have been delays, and it is a very touchy subject, so I figured I might as well make a video addressing the situation. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. If you guys enjoyed this video and all of my Starship coverage, please subscribe to Ellie in Space. It's completely free and that way you won't miss any future videos. If you want to take it a step further, please consider signing up for my Patreon. YouTube revenue can be very unpredictable and hit or miss. And you guys on my Patreon are why I'm able to take these trips and help me experience the life that I'm very thankful to live 
down here at Starbase and many of the other places that I've gone to report for the channel and the places that I'll be going in the future.